Hello everyone. Today we are here to discuss how we can design the perfect UI or the perfect user interface for your business. And when I say business, today I particularly mean your e-commerce website. Now I imagine there could be people from different walks of life, different professions listening to this. Some of us could be uh, entrepreneurs, consultants, developers, some are designers, they could even be marketeers. That's, that's good. It's good to have a mix, a good mix of people. And the subject matter is important for us all, so I'm going to try to keep it relevant and relatable for all of us. Now I'm sure we have all heard the terms UI UX. They have been the buzzword for quite some time now. So quickly, do we know what UI UX is? Do we even know why do we talk about them together? Uh, can you tell me the difference between UI and UX? Very broadly speaking, this is it. UI is the part with which a user directly interacts, whereas uh, the user cannot directly interact to an UX. A UX is an overall environment. UX is the overall warm, fuzzy feeling of a product. To give an example, it's a local example, think of a restaurant. You go to a restaurant, what you eat there is their great food, and what you don't eat is their chair or the decor or the lights or the ambience or the way the waiters talk to you and make you feel special. You don't eat any of that, but you enjoy it. It is part of the overall restaurant experience which you love. That's why you keep going to that place. You like that place and you keep spending a lot of money there. The food is definitely part of the overall experience. Similarly, UI is part of the holistic overall UX. So why am I blabbering so much about UI and UX and why should you even believe me? It's because Besides working with graphics for almost six years now, I've been working as a UI designer for three years and I've been trying to understand UX for almost two years now. Basically, I've been Googling a lot. I, I mean, I've been trying to read up a lot and I'm, I'm trying to understand what UX is. You can check out some of my works on Dribble and Behance if you want and I'm going to leave links to those profiles in the description of this video. Okay, another localized ex uh, example. So. Shopno supermarket versus new market kacha bazaar. Shopno is basically a supermarket and new market kacha bazaar could be the farmer's market of Western worlds. So where would you go and why would you go there? I would like to get some feedback, personal opinions. Uh, so if we try to figure out some distinguishable characteristics between these two types of marketplace, we will get uh, Comfort, price, transaction type, and loyalty. So the level of comfort would vary between these two places. Shopno would be uh, air conditioned, there would be beautifully stacked racks, and the price would be different at these two places. Shopno would have fixed prices, whereas New Market Kacha Bazaar would be a place of uh, bargaining, and transaction types could be different. You could use your Visa, MasterCard, different types of transaction, Bcash, etc. at Shopno, whereas in New Market Kacha Bazaar, all you have is cash, all you can use is cash and loyalty. Based on these different attributes, you can have a preconceived loyalty to a particular place. So for example, my, my parents or older people would have a loyalty towards places like New Market Kacha Bazaar. Now, based on these different points, which one do you think has a better UX? Which of these marketplaces? Think about it for a moment. The right answer is there is no universal best UX when it comes to a marketplace. To each his own. Everyone has his or her, her own perfect version of a market and that version is the best version, the best user experience for him or her. Confusing? Let's make it even more confusing. Let's somehow imagine a mashup of Shopno and New Market Kacha Bajar, a mixture of these two, a combination of these two where all the attributes and best parts of both marketplaces are present. Now, why would you want to imagine, let alone go to such a crazy place? It's because of you can allow differential pricing and differential UX to such an imaginary place. So imagine offering different prices to different people as they're willing to pay. Offering different user experience to different people. If someone likes AC, you give them AC. If someone likes the muddy, warm, moist environment, you give them that. If someone likes to bargain, you let them bargain. If someone wants a fixed price, that's what you give them. 
but is it, but is it really possible or practical for both of these worlds to coexist in one singular place in real world maybe not but in for websites it is all right so the presentation is supposed to be about clickstream analysis so that's what i'm going to talk about uh what is clickstream analysis it's a system it's a tool a software it's a method whatever you want to call it to record parts of the screen a computer user clicks on while browsing a website or some application as the user clicks anywhere in the web page or an app the action is locked on a client or inside the web server as well as on the web browser router proxy server etc there are primarily three ways you can make sense of such recordings click hit maps scroll depth gradient and refl confetti maps all right so why in the world would you want to keep track of all these things it's because your users are not monoliths everybody is not the same people are different demographic variance is a reality although in this picture you see all men but usually your customers can be male females kids senior people people from city people from small town people of different mindsets different background etc and for each of these different people, their ideal version of a UX will be different. And Clickstream analysis can help you figure out these differences in your customers. It can help you find out their preference, but how does it do that? Like I said before, it does so by measuring a couple of metrics. Uh, it measures clicks. The interaction between the user and the web server is measured by measuring the clicks of a mouse. The number of times a user visits a specific website, then there's hits, total number of server requests received by the server, service by the server, then site exists, exi exits, which is counted by the site inactivity for more than 30 minutes. You have unique visitors, uh, unique people who accesses the website in a specific period of time. You have average number of times a user returns to a site over a specific time period, which is repeated visitors. You have the number of views any of any page of a website gets then you have active session sessions which is which is which according to iab internet architecture board is a sequence of internet activity made by one user at one site and it, it's it's the antonym of inactive session which is basically if a user makes no request during a 30 minute period of time the next content or uh ad served would constitute a beginning of a new visitor a new session you have also unique authenticated visitors which is a user who logs onto a website via a registration method using his or her id and passport now if you track and analyze the stream of data collected from your customers you can easily identify different paths taken by your visitors and the sequence of pages that lead to payment of your service or product which which should be the ultimate objective of any e-commerce website payment. So, so for example, in the example you see there, user, your user might want to go to one final objective and he can use different paths to go to that objective. Clickstream analysis would help you find out the path your user takes. What if you're a marketer? Well, based on the stream of data you collect from click tracking or clickstream analysis, you can easily figure out some interesting patterns. Do your customers buy stuff in a buy more stuff in a particular month? If so, what month is it? Uh, are there purchases that tend to be made after a particular life event of your customers? Uh, then, based on these insights, you can refine marketing mix strategies and you can identify new product opportunities. You can also predict consumer behavior and you can predict future demands. You can also do micro level recency frequency monetary analysis, scanning your Clickstream database. You can find out when did a customer last purchase and how often has a customer purchased products uh, and how much has the customer spent on product purchases. So recency frequency monetary. You can also maximize cross selling opportunities in your online store by identifying the top non-purchase products that customers also look at before completing their purchasing process and then add this non-selling products as purchasing suggestions well there are other alternative methods to maximize cross-selling platforms so uh, how does amazon do it amazon 
does it by maintaining an extensive customer database and then doing micro level real time monitoring real time suggestions and collaborating filtering although such a process can give better results it's far more complex and expensive the results you can get from clickstream analysis now how does clickstream analysis help in design decisions well, let's discuss case studies because we designers love learning from other designers. I mean, blatantly speaking, we love learning from other people's mistakes and love learning at other people's expense. So a clickstream analysis service provider did an audit for the North Face, the company which makes jackets and clothing for outdoor activities. Well, the North Face came to them with the concern that their conversion rates went good so clickstream analysis revealed that people would add a jacket to the north face website to the cart but wouldn't check out so they wouldn't complete the purchase the conversion rates were dropping at the checkout stage of their shopping cart page after doing split testing or ab testing based on this insight and then doing clickstream analysis again Hitmap tracking revealed that a promotional banner before the checkout button was causing all sorts of unwanted distractions. Mouse move hitmap revealed that visitors interacted more with the checkout button when it was moved above the banner with a 21% increase in clicks. So a UI decision, a UI modification was made not arbitrarily, not because the designer said it looked nice, but because the data said, said so, because your conversion rate improves when you do so. Another design case study, 1-800-CONTACTS, which sells prescription contact lenses over the internet, wanted to make it as easy and convenient as possible to purchase contact lenses from its website. It was paramount for the company's success to provide the most seamless customer experience to their customers. So they wanted to know where did their UI lack? How could their website UI be improved? Clickstream analysis revealed that the prescription information CTA or call to action button on their website was seeing less than optimal engagement because it often fell under the fold on smaller screens or low resolutions. So now there was an actual reason why a designer or a product manager would want to rearrange the UI and place the CTA button in a particular position or above the fold. So clickstream analysis can help you objectively figure out design shortcomings rather than arbitrarily redesigning things. Uh, you no longer are confined to the decision of some designer because he's a senior designer or you should no longer need to listen to the hippo. Hippo is the highest paid person's opinion. No, all UI design or UI redesign should serve a particular purpose and clickstream analysis can help you find objectively find that purpose so to sum it up sum it all up we started this presentation trying to find the perfect ui for e-commerce websites well tough luck there is no perfect ui but there are systems which can help you find that perfect ui or perfect ux for your e-commerce site and clickstream analysis happens to be one of the most efficient of such systems that's the end of the presentation. Thank you very much.